Here's a very simple explanation as to why America will never and can never be invaded. Starting off at the 10th position, we have Iraq with 30 firearm per 100 people. Moving on to the ninth place, we have Iran with 31, Switzerland at number 8 with 32 firearms. Moving upwards at number 7, Uruguay with 32.5 per 100 people. Finland with 33 firearms secures its place in the 6th position. Reaching to the top 5, New Zealand at 5 with 34.5 firearms. Cyprus at the 4th place with 37 firearms. At 3rd place, it's Serbia with 38 firearms. At number 2, it's Republic of Yemen, with staggering 55 firearms per 100 people. However, at the top of the list, it's the land of free liberty and democracy, the United States with 120 firearms per 100, making Americans the most armed people in the world. America! California judge has granted an injunction for three defendants whose Second Amendment rights were taken away because of a decades-old felonies. Welcome to another installment of the Connecticut Gun Bench. Today's video is brought to you by PAN Firearms, LLC. PAN Firearms, your NRA certification and multifaceted gun training. You can reach us at 203-300-6343 or use our website at www.panfirearmsllc.com. As always, there'll be a link in the description box below. And if you like channel like content, what I do here, you can support me. The link, everything is appreciated. And for my Connecticut residents, if you plan on getting your Connecticut pistol permit, please get that training done before July 2024 because then after that it gets longer, harder, more expensive. If you have your permit, watch the expiration date. Don't let it expire. There's a link to the online renewal portal for the Connecticut pistol permits in the description box. Keep an eye on that. Let's talk about this. And this, once again, this is coming out of California. And there are three defendants who filed a lawsuit against the state's penal code claiming that if you have a felony, you no longer have a right to own a firearm. Now, as you're gonna find out as I dig deeper into this, these felonies against these three individuals are decades old. Now, I have gone back and forth on this issue multiple times, and I'm gonna make my position 100% clear again. If you committed a felony decades ago, and you have done nothing else since then, you should not be denied the rights under the Second Amendment. If you are an habitual offender, with violent crime after violent crime after violent crime, no, I do not think you should be allowed access to a firearm. It's just common sense. I'm sure I'm gonna hear about that. But a judge in California has said, yes, I'm going to grant a summary judgment in the case, and the case is called Linton versus Bonta. I'm coming to here. Judge grants summary judgments against California law denying restored gun rights. A federal judge in California has granted summary judgment to three individuals in a lawsuit challenging the state's penal code, which permanently denies Second Amendment rights to people who have had felony convictions vacated, set aside, or dismissed, and their rights to possess firearms fully restored. This case is known as Linton v. Bonta. U.S. District Judge James Don Donato in the Northern District of California wrote, after multiple hearings and several rounds of briefings, and in light of the guidance provided by New York State Rifle and Pistol Association Incorporated versus Bruin, the court concludes that California has violated the Second Amendment rights of the individual plaintiffs. Consequently, summary judgment is granted in favor of Chad Linton, Paul McKinley, Stewart, and Kendall Jones on their applied Second Amendment claim. The case was originally filed in December 2018, and once again, this shows a real problem with the court system. It was filed in 2018. We're just getting this in 2024. They are represented by attorney George Lee of Cellular Epstein LLP in San Francisco. The challenge was originally brought by SAF, the Coggins Foundation, Madison Society Foundation, Firearm Policy Coalition, and Firearms Policy Foundation, and the three individuals, in his opinion, Judge Donato dismissed all the institutional plaintiffs. SAF continues to support the case. According to SAF Executive Director Adam Kraut, the three individual plaintiffs were all convicted of nonviolent felonies in other states decades ago. And that goes back to my point about how I think this should be applied. These three should not have had their rights permanently denied because of something they did decades ago. And as is pointed out here, these were all nonviolent 
incidences. None of the convictions involved a weapon, drugs, or violence in the ordinary meaning of the word. Each of the plaintiffs had their conviction vacated, set aside, or dismissed, and their right to possess firearms restored by this jurisdiction in which they were convicted. Linton legally acquired firearms in California on prior occasions, and Jones was a career law enforcement officer in California with special training and certification as a firearm instructor. Even so, California acted to permanently deny them of that right to possess or own firearms solely on the basis of their original convictions, which is wrong. Quote, this is a huge victory, said SAF founder and executive vice president Alan M. Gottlieb. It should amount to a first major step to create an avenue for other people with similar circumstances to return to lives of full citizenship. We're delighted with Judge Donato's ruling. This is just one more example of our mission to win firearms freedom, one lawsuit at a time. Let's go ahead and come out of that. In this case, with these three defendants, the state of California is absolutely wrong. They should not be denied their rights because of felony convictions. Once again, they were nonviolent. Don't know what they were. They didn't really get into it. But they should not have been denied their rights because of this. And the only of these cases, all three defendants had their convictions overturned, dismissed, and vacated. That should have been end of it right there. That should have been done. All their rights should come right back to them. No questions asked. But this is just another good step in the right direction, and I applaud this judge for looking at it openly, which is kind of surprising that a judge out of San Francisco <laughs> is, is going in this direction, because unfortunately judges, even in their positions of authority, still tend to use their political leanings in their judgments. But he's correct in this case, and hopefully more and more people will bring these kinds of lawsuits against this. And once again, could it be something that could be solved on a federal level with a law, that, you know, basically a federal law stating that if you commit a felony and I, I would go as far as to say regard almost regardless of what it is but if you have kept yourself clean for decades you should not be denied your rights but this is a great plus and i give a thumbs up to this judge for doing this and we'll see where it goes from there because there's a good chance that the state california loves to waste their taxpayers money on failed ideals but we shall see going forward let me know what you think as always, you can leave your comments in the comment section below. And as always, any statements of violence or statements that lead to violence will be removed. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you're notified the next time a video goes live. I will see you on the next one. Peace.